Hey everyone, it's Dr. Marcon. Sorry, the screen castomatic kicked me off after 15 minutes, so I have to do a part three of the chapter 12 nervous tissue chapter. Anywho, um, I was on this slide. There are different types of processing. Uh, there are two actually. So we have serial processing and parallel processing. With serial processing, the neurons will pass a signal to a specific destination along a single pathway from one to another. With parallel processing, processing, the input is delivered along many pathways, and a single sensory stimulus will result in multiple perceptions. Now, the neuronal circuits uh, form networks of interneurons, and this is integration between the peripheral nervous system, the stimulus from the peripheral nervous, nervous system, and the central nervous system. For example, we say we have a painful stimulus, uh, like stepping on a tack or um, you know, cutting yourself with a piece of glass. The immediate response is a spinal reflex, and we saw how that was a polysynaptic type reflex. Sensory information is passed along to the brain. However, um, pain is also felt after reflexive withdrawal. So here we see... Um, the sensory stimulus eliciting signals through several neuronal pathways. Okay, so first we have that rapid um, withdrawal reflex where the painful stimulus will trigger the nerve impulses in a sensory neuron. We will then initiate the polysynaptic withdrawal reflex. Um, however, we have a slower um, pathway. This is the uh, cortical pathway where um, we have parallel processing of this information. So at the same time, while we're withdrawing, the nerve impulse uh, for pain will travel on an, on an axon branch that extends into the white matter. And uh, this ascending axon carries the nerve impulses to the brain. So we feel that perception of pain. Holy crap, that hurts. So we know that the integration is within the gray matter. Multiple interneurons will process the nerve impulse to help localize the stimulus where the pain is, identify its source, and then plan a response. Uh, this is complex processing. You know, we think, okay, this is pain. What am I going to do? Um, we can see it illustrated here in a more simplified way, which, you know, first you, it enables you to feel pain, and then you have the voluntary motor response, which is to stick your finger underneath some cold water. So this is a non-reflexive motor response, which is initiated in the gray matter and transmitted down the descending um, axon in the white matter to help stimulate the somatic motor neurons to move your hand under some cold water or to, you know, grab some ice to put or, you know, clean the wound and dress it, whatever. So that is that parallel uh, response uh, along with that, that postsynaptic or polysynaptic withdrawal reflex. Okay, so not only are we automatically taking our hand away from the pain, but we are also feeling the pain and um, coming up with ways to deal with it. So we have disorders of the nervous system. We have many, but we're only going to focus on a few. Uh, the first one is MS or multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis is on an autoimmune disease. Uh, you may have heard of many celebrities that have multiple sclerosis, like Annette Funicello. If you know who Annette Funicello is, probably not because you guys are like, you know, super young. Um, she was an original musketeer, um, a Mickey Mouse musketeer. She was in several like 1950s beach blanket, um, you know, cheesy movies. Uh, but there are other celebrities now, I think, dealing with it. Um, Anywho, the immune system attacks that myelin around the axons in the central nervous system. Uh, multiple sclerosis varies widely in intensity among those who are affected. Um, more women are actually affected than men. And when men are affected, the disease develops more quickly and is more devastating. However, the cause is not understood completely, so is incompletely understood. Uh, with regards to neural injuries, um, neural injuries may cause permanent dysfunction. 
if axons alone are destroyed, uh, cell bodies often survive and the axons may regenerate. Um, within the peripheral nervous system, the macrophages will invade and destroy axons uh, distal to the injury. And then axon filaments can grow peripherally from the injured site. So partial recovery is sometimes uh, possible. So we're talking about neuronal regeneration here. In the central nervous system, uh, neuroglia never form bands to guide uh, regrowing axons and may actually hinder axon growth with growth inhibiting chemicals. So there is no effective regeneration after injury to the spinal cord and brain. And here we can actually see regeneration of an axon in a peripheral nerve. Um, so here we see the site of nerve damage. So the axon becomes fragmented at the injury sites. Um, then we have our macrophages coming in. Macrophages will clean out the dead axon distal to the injury. Uh, next axon will sprout um, and the uh, will sprout uh, usually uh, with the filaments. Uh, they grow through a regeneration tube that are formed by Schwann cells. So here we see fine axon sprouts or filaments here. And uh, help with the aid of the uh, Schwann cells that form a regeneration tube. Okay, And then here the axon will regenerate and a new myelin sheath forms. So here we have the site of the new myelin sheath. Throughout life, nervous system develops from the dorsal ectoderm, which will invaginate to form the neural tube and the neural crest. Now, the neural tube walls begin as neuroepithelial cells, which divide and become neuroblasts. So here we see the development of the nervous system in uh, the fifth and sixth week of the embryonic period. So we see the neural tube and the neural crest form. So here is the neural tube. Here are cells of the neural crest uh, that form from the uh, invaginating ectoderm. This is at day 28. Week 5, we see neuroepithelial cells of the neural tube uh, divide and migrate externally, which will become neuroblasts and neuroglia. And then week 6, we can see neural crest cells form the sensory neurons. So here are the sensory neurons from the neural crest. And these are the neural crest cells. Uh, dorsal neuroblasts from the uh, alar plates, which are future interneurons. Um, and then long axons extending from the interneurons form the white matter. The ventral neuroblasts from the basal plate will be the future motor neurons. Okay, So we know that uh, these will be the sensory, these will be the motor. Okay. And that's about it for the embryonic development um, and embryology of the nervous system. So that completes chapter 12 of the nervous system. I'm sorry, this is so short, but again, the uh, software kind of kicked me off last time. So just add this to uh, the rest of the chapter 12 lecture series.